Oh, yeah, people came to the world. He said they caught those people and they have killed them all. Bishop, oh, yeah, people, the blood of those people are in your hand. You did not follow the law court before your army and your police killed them. As a believer, you don't have to depend on your pastor because you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the one who came on this planet to come and die for your sins. You believe in him because he is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is the King of Kings. Don't depend on your pastor if you're a believer and you truly believe in the water baptism and the spirit gospel. It's not your own baptism. I'm talking about Christ baptism. You don't need to rely on your pastor because you have the access to pray to God to fulfill everything that you need. Young Christians who have just repented need pastors so that the pastors can teach them for them to know the word of God, not any other pastor. Some people call themselves pastors, but they are not pastors. Some people even make the pastoral ministry look like a career. Pastoral ministry is not a career. Pastoral ministry is telling the person the authentic word of God. For the person to know the true salvation and the true love of God. I'm going to show you a video from one of Bishop Ayadipu Junior Pastors. Who is no more with him again. He accused him of being a murderer. And also Ayadipu makes us understood that when he started ministry. He has never borrowed any money from anywhere. And this man of God came with evidence. Trying to let us understand that Ayadipu borrowed money in his ministry. Let's listen to what this man of God said. Oh, he came to the world. He said they caught those people and they have killed them all. Bishop oh, the blood of those people are in your hand. You did not follow the law court before your army and your police killed them. This is that the church of God. I'm not fending for those people. What are they doing? But for adventure, some of them they lie against them. You understand? Here in America, you have to prove all things. Yeah, jungle justice is against the Bible. Do you know what people hate most in this world? What? The truth. <laughs> the truth. Jesus has said it. The, uh, Pastor Sunday began to open up to speak the truth. They hate him. They know it. He's saying the truth. Jesus Christ knew there was no truth in the church. He hates her. He said, you turn. The house of God, in the dance of him, he began to pluck them out. Pastor Sunday is using the scripture and the Bible to flush the teeth in the body of Christ's house. Because the, remember, Jesus said, I am coming to meet a church without any blemish. This blemish must go starting from this year. Amen. Brethren, if you go, sit down and read the Bible to buttress your point. The Bible says, in my time, it says, will I do anything without telling my servant the prophet? Where are the prophets? We say, oh, the God of Elijah. Where are the Elijah of God? We are in the prophet that we can trust. God Almighty could not find the one to prepare us. In the day of Prophet Agabus, they said there was a plague. It's not the first time. And what happened? The church opened their wallet first and sent relief to brethren abroad. What are they doing now? They forcing the people to come to church. It is, I tell you, brethren, open your eyes and your ears. It's because of money. Is it not the same Bible say we should obey the people in authority? If the authority say be locked down, why is your bishop able telling you I opened the church in the name of and he was hiding, he was hiding himself. He didn't come out. What are you going even when in the day of Passover, God told them no one should go out this week because of the Israel. They obey God. Why is it that they cannot obey God in His word that they should obey the God? And I want to tell them to open their eyes uh, that there is no way you are that you cannot pray and God will answer. God will not answer. God will answer you. 
when Jesus Christ, when they ask the disciples, teach us how to pray. The first recommendation Jesus Christ said, when you want to pray, go into your closet. Lock your door. I'm praying to your God. He will reward you openly. I'm talking to you, brethren. So look at the Bible. Where was Jonah? That God answered him. Number one, Jonah was in the belly of a fish and in a boisterous water. He prayed to God and the fish put him out. So there is no way like my pastor said, Pastor Joshua, he said, Come now, let us reason together. There is no way you cannot reason with God. God loves you. He said, Return to me. I will return to you. It's not saying return to man. You understand? One thing I want to, you to know, which you know in the Bible, the bishop or a depot, G or all of you, even here in America, the world. They, Jesus Christ said, in that day, many will say, I have done this in your name. I have healed in your name. I have done this in your name. Pastor Joshua, this is where I, I have to sit tight. Jesus Christ said what? He said, I will tell you, get deep behind me. I know you not. Mm -hmm. You workers of iniquity. I want to tell them, the born again has become a slogan. That alone did not take you to heaven. That's why we say, I'll tell you, get it behind me. I know you know. I want you to know if they are not teaching you morality, truthfulness in your church, read your Bible, pray to God Almighty. Born again is a slogan. Even if you say you have no, you accepted Jesus Christ, that is not still the ticket. He told you, the woman, he said, go and sin no more. Some pastor will say, oh, Jesus is a joke. If you sin, that is all. That is not all. He said, go and sin no more. That is what will take you to heaven. Mm. We are in the journey. This is part of the journey. Where we are going after this earth is what matters, brethren. Think about it. Your bishop, your pastor will not take you to heaven. He will not take you to heaven. It is what you do yourself. Bible says, everyone work out your own salvation. If they tell you they are praying for you, they have problems too. They are praying for themselves. Pray for yourself. Learn how to pray. God said, well, say, I don't dwell in the building made with man's hands. Mm. God is a spirit. And the spirit of God is in you. He wants to speak to you. He loves you. Do you know that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son to the whole world, not only to the Christian, to the Muslim, to the Buddhism, but say, as many that receive him, to them, the power to become the son of God. Son of God. I, I received him. I was in darkness. I was part of those that answered the clarity of God. Romans 8 says, what shall separate me from the love of God? Is it very, is it persecution that I face with you? He said, in all these things, I am more than conquerors. Let this year be a new year for us, Nigerian especially. Look at how many churches in Nigeria and Africa. Why is our this thing still deteriorating? The problem of Nigeria is not only the political leaders, but the religious leaders. After taking white hands, contract from them. After they have stolen the money from the government, they bring it. You make them pastor, you make them date it. God is watching. The thought of God is not like that. They In fact, sir, it. they are the ones I blame the most. I blame the religious, um, the religious heads in Nigeria for the chaos that we have in that place. Because most people respect their pastors more than they respect politicians. Politicians come and go. Pastors remain the same. 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. These people keep hearing the same pastors. But for some reason, they've not been able to have enough influence to change the political landscape of Nigeria, to change the mentality, the value system of Nigerians. Most people who are corrupt, like you just said, they go to churches. They use the loot from the government to even atone and say, oh, but I'm giving tithes. You're stealing the people's funds. You're stealing taxpayers' money. <laughs> but you're taking tithes to church, and the pastor is saying, hey, God bless you. 
And it's like everything is fine. But the country keeps decaying. The country keeps getting worse. The more churches we have. So how come people who go to church are not able to influence society for God? Because they are not hearing. Exactly. When was the last time any politician came out to teach people about values or tell people how to behave? It's pastors who do that. It's parents who do that. They are the life coaches of the church, they are the, of the country, sorry. They are the ones who set the spiritual thermometer, the moral thermometer, and what have you. They are, the, they are the people who hold the highest levels of power in Nigeria right now. Buhari is powerful, but he's there for eight years and he's gone. But all these pastors of the churches you're talking about, they've been in power, or they've been, they've been building their churches now for what? They're like CEOs. They've been there for 20, 30, 40, for decades. And people are loyal to them. They have more followers than politicians do. So if things are going wrong in the country, they are the ones I hold responsible. Because they have not helped to change the mentality of the people in so much that they will now be able to go into the world and really become light to the country. Yeah. So, but that's the point. You said the politicians go to the church. So that means they believe they will be enlightened in the church. Their life will be better if they go to the church. But they don't know they are going to the dens of thieves. Who are building empire for children get unborn. I believe they follow Edeko for all this while. But when he wants to choose who will be his, his successor, or whatever they call it, his firstborn, that when I started, he was in the Robert University. He has chosen, he has announced it. That he is a cow. All of them three. Oh, 2008, let me remember, uh, remind you, sir. For these people to open their eyes, if you don't forget, Nigerian, Oedeko and all of them went to the National Stadium through Larry to pray that no Muslim will re rule Nigeria again. When that Muslim Yahatua came in rule Nigeria, he won the election. Shame on you, Yedeko. Where is your prophecy? Because it's not from God. They came this one, the, uh, after Jonathan. They prayed. They were through everything. I I saw him. No Muslim. Shame on you. Can't you know that your pastor, bishop, don't have the word of God? They have the word of politicians. Who won again? A Muslim worry. God created Muslim. If you love them, as they show me the love in my alma mater at Delta Grammar School, the love I saw there. We are everyone in our school, high school. We, whether you are son of a politician, the president, everybody, we are one when we put home. And me, as a sport person in that, we are one. The love they showed me made me to know God for the seed of glory in me. Let's love these people, whether they are Muslim, whether they are this. Who told you yourself you are going to make it heaven? Let's love. The love is what Jesus Christ came to give to us. And sir, I would like to ask you, have you had any explanation as to why after all of that prayers, after all of the prayers they did in Sulilere, We've had two Muslim presidents after that prayer. Has anybody offered an explanation as to why, was it prayer or prophecy? Why none of that came into effect? Like I said, he said, will I do anything without telling my servant, the prophet? Sir, if you can show me a true prophet in, the, in Nigeria, tell me. It cannot come to pass. He said, who has said it? That it will come to pass when the Lord God has not said when the Lord has not spoken it. It cannot come to pass because God does not trust them. So, so you've not had any explanation, and neither have I. So, I guess um, everybody is just going to forget, right? That they, those people said those things or they prayed those things <laughs> because it's strange. Because when I look at the Bible, every single thing that God said came to pass. If there was going to be a change, he would say there's going to be a change. And right now, we're supposed to have a better relationship with God than even the prophets in the Old Testament. But they seem to have a lot more clarity than we do today. That means something is clearly wrong that needs to be corrected. Clearly wrong. Do you know that when Jesus Christ ascended, the Bible said, and the disciple trek a servant. What is a servant? That is seven days. 
These are the true prophets of God. They walk seven days. But yet now, if they don't have aircraft, they are not going to. They will give you an excuse why they have to have aircraft. Do you want to tell me the church of God born in Acts chapter 2 was not born with power? The church of God was born with power in Acts chapter 2. But nowadays, we are at those powers. We are ordinary. Shadow of Peter is healing. You, you understand? Mm -hmm. You see, let me tell you something. If you like it or not, your bishop, your pastor, they have entered into a cultic, into devil's camp to gather the crowd. But that day, they know themselves. They are kneeling down in their corner, begging God for forgiveness. You understand? They are things. Don't let us not. Morris Arino will say, don't look at the surface. Look at the root. Look at the root. These people, they are educated like me to all of them. They sit, sit down and hear the lies of Oedipo. In the, if you ask for anybody, the Akena land, all the business, even the pure water. One day, when I went there one time, after I started the church, I said, who, who is the owner of this business? Who is that? Everything is Bishop Oedipo. Nobody outside can come and have his store, bank everything. Then if it is true land of God, do you think thieves and armed robber can enter that Kenya land and begin to kill them from the security inside? He was there. They said the Covenant University, some of the students and this thing. You know what baffled me most? I asked one of the deacons. He was so happy the next Sunday. When he came to the world, he said they caught those people and they have killed them all. Bishop Oedipo, the blood of those people are in your hand. You did not follow the law court before your army and your police killed them. This is that the church of God. I'm not paying for those people. What are they doing? But for adventure. Some of them, they lie against them. You understand? Here in America, you have to prove all things. Yeah, jungle justice is against the Bible. Jungle justice. This is a man built houses there that did not collect approval from the state government. And his paper showed it why their members were beating these officials of the state government. Is that what church stands for? I want to say this. We are the gatekeeper. Our attitude and character determine if the unbeliever, the people outside, will come to the church, or those that are in the church will go away. This is very important. That's why I said the, the judgment will start from inside the, the of God. church. That's of God. <laughs> But it is going to start. We, you and I, Pastor, this one and others, we have to start. I said, evangelism first now should not even this year start. Let it start from inside the church. That's what you and I we are doing now. Let it start. Let's start afresh. Let us live the church, live like the church that was born at the upper room. Which power you understand yeah it's, that's my prayer amen thank you very much reverend all i just want to say in the book of Proverbs, we said he that give to the rich shall become poor there are many your neighbors your friends that you know that are suffering you don't know how to take that thousands of naira to the church. Let it start from your neighbor. Let it start from those that you know. Mm. And the God Almighty, who sees your sincere 
hard for him to bless you. Mm -hmm. There are poverty in Nigeria. And let even the political leaders live up to their promises. Your network, bishop, pastors, you are not going to take anything out. It's time to open up your wallets, your purse, to the people. Teach them the word of God so that when you are not there, they will be able to pray to God. Teach them how to know God, not how to know you. I caught light on not borrowing 42 years ago. I have never been tempted to. Now, I have not borrowed, I have not begged, and I have not lied. Financially, we have never gone down once. We have never borrowed once, never. They wanted to do their 25 year anniversary, but they don't have money to pay. He borrowed that time 25,000 US dollars for me to pay that company. He asked me to kind of borrow money I can call him. He asked aircraft in Houston, America that he want to service and the total cost of everything was 31,000. The summary is here, everything totally 31,000 plus US dollars. To that service the private jet of Bishop Oedipo. Bishop Oedipo, 31,000 right. plus. He asked me to pay the funded half of 15,000. I came from a place called Itoko that I can call the stronghold of devil in Ambelkuta, whoever is from the state, we know that. But I want to give God the thanks, all the thanks for my alma mater, the Ambelkuta Grammar School. I was a Muslim, but wow. yeah, God dropped his seed of war into me. I know, you finished listening to what this man of God has said about Bishop Ayadipo. It's not like if the bishop or if the pastor is popular, that means the hand of God is on that pastor. A lot of them are doing business with the word of God. A lot of them are not called by God. They've called themselves into ministry to do people and also to lead people astray. You have to be very careful if you're watching me. A lot of pastors who are in the mainstream limelight and you think that they are powerful, God has blessed them, don't fall for those people. All you have to do, if you really want to know that this pastor is from God, if you really want to detect that, is the true hand of God is on this pastor. And first of all, what you have to know that if the pastor is preaching and also talking about Christ, the pastor is not talking about his life history, he's not talking about any philosophy or giving us any encouragement or motivation. All what he says is based on the scriptures and he's talking about Christ. And also any pastor who has believed in the water baptism and the spirit gospel. If I talk about the water baptism, I was glancing through one of my videos and I was reading a comment. If I'm talking about the water baptism and the spirit gospel, I'm not talking about your baptism. Because your baptism will never send you anywhere. I'm talking about Christ's baptism. Believe in it and also believe in the spirit. Be very careful. And if not truly repent, please repent because the kingdom of God is at hand. Because there is no time. That is a good mandate. I have dedicated myself to let you know that after death there is judgment. So you have to repent so that you believe in the water baptism and the spirit gospel. You believe in Jesus Christ, the Holy Son of God who came on this planet earth. Jesus Christ didn't come for only Christians. He came for the world. Anyone who believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that person is qualified. And now that person is going to build his faith. To guide your conscience from any person so that you can find yourself in the bosom Christ. Thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you another time.